Okay, so as promised, I'm going to show you how to put this little folio base together for this fall home decor piece. And you're going to start with craft card stock. You're going to need five sheets of 8.5 by 11. And you want it to be a pretty good weight, probably around 110 pounds would be good because it's going to take a little wear and tear. And the first thing you're going to do is cut two of those pieces to measure 8.5 by five and a half and that's what I've done here you're going to join them on the ends with a half inch piece of score tape then score a half inch spine and what you're going to end up with is two pieces that measure I should have written that down um, from the spine they're going to measure eight inches on either side with a half inch spine but then this forms the base of your album now, for the inner pages, you have to create some sort of a spine to hold things in. And to do that, you're going to need a piece of craft card stock that is five and a quarter inches square. And you're just going to put that on your score tool. And um, starting from the left, you're going to score at one and a quarter. You're going to score at one and three quarters. You're going to score at two and a quarter. You're going to score at two and three quarters. You're going to score at three and a quarter. And then you're going to score at three and three quarters. So now you've got this series of scores. This is how I do this. This is the easiest way I've found. I just pinch them together like this. And then I go this way and I go this way. This one that's in the middle, this panel that's in the middle, don't mess with that one. Leave him alone. Come over here to the right and pinch these two score lines together and fold and fold. So it's going to look like this. And basically flip this over, open it up, take half inch score tape, and you're going to lay it right along this outer score line. And we'll come back and trim that in just a second. But do this on both sides. And I do recommend, you can use any adhesive you want, but it really needs to be a strong adhesive because this is the base of your, this is the spine. This is what's holding everything together. So it needs to be pretty sturdy. And I find that score tape holds really well. All right, so I trimmed off those little hangy over parts. And we're just going to take this and we're going to pinch that together so that it holds. I'll show you that again. Peel off your tape line, pinch, and then this becomes your spine. Now, you're going to this right here. So, here you go. I'll just show you that again. Here's the half inch score line on your book cover. You're going to line the half inch score line up with that. And then you're just going to use score tape. And again, I recommend score tape because um, it's really strong. And it's going to take all the wear and tear that the album is going to receive as it's opened and looked at and all of that. So you're just going to go you're going to do the whole thing. And again, you can use glue, but I just have, have not had great success with that because the glue will shift and you really want this to stay in place. This has to be sturdy. This is kind of the skeleton for your whole album, if you will. And then for this one, I'm going to put the score tape on the actual, whoops, on the actual album. And just take that down to the bottom. And again, come in with your scissors real quick and just trim off any overhanging pieces. And I like to do it like this. I remove the center piece. Then I line 
this just, I just feel like I have a little more control doing it this way. And I line my half inch up. You want this centered between the top and the bottom because your spine is five and a quarter and your book cover is five and a half. So now I've done that. And I can press that in. Now I can come over here, lift this side up, remove the tape, press it down. And then I can, I'll flip it because it's easier for me to work with on camera that way. And then just peel your tape from here. And then press it down. And the reason I do it that way is that I end up with it straight. If I try to do all that sticky um, tape at the same time, a lot of times I end up catty corner. But see now, you just burnish your fold lines on the outside of your spine, and you've got these lovely little flaps that we're going to attach our envelope pockets to. So that's the next thing we're going to build. And for that, you're going to need two pieces of craft card stock, and you're going to cut these. I did one already. I'm going to open this one up. You're going to cut this eight and a half by eleven sheet of craft card stock so that it's seven and a three quarter inches wide by eleven inches long. Then you're going to need your score tool again, and you're going to lay this on the long side, and you're going to score at five and a quarter and ten and a half, and then burnish your fold lines always. And I'll just show you this finished one so you can see. Here's the pocket. So basically, you're just going to put a piece of score tape right here, a little glue on the bottom edge, cut a thumb hole, and there's your pocket. Easy as you please. So for this one, I think I want the seam edge to be this way. And so I'm going to cut my pocket right here. It's always easier to cut the pocket before you seam the paper. So just take whatever circle punch you like. You can mark the center with a pencil if you want. I always just kind of eyeball it and it seems to work out just fine. Move this out of the way. And then what you're going to do is, for this I used quarter inch score tape because I don't want to run over into this channel because that's going to interfere with your photo mounts. Um, being able to pull out your photo mounts. So run it right along the edge. Can you see that in my frame? Okay, and then pull this one off. And then kind of overlap it a little bit. Like this. And there you go. Then before you close it, I run a little bead of glue down this side and then peel off this piece of score tape and you're just going to fold this over on top and burnish it and there's your pocket. So now you've got your two pockets that are going to fit inside and to attach these you're just going to glue them like this but we're not going to do that yet because I want to run my decorative paper first before I do that but you get the idea and then this will be attached to this little flap this will be attached to this little flap and there you go so let's get ready for the next step and I'll be back Okay, so I'm back with the next step in building our bountiful folio to go in our bountiful home decor. And here's what the front cover is going to, the start of what the front cover is going to look like. And you can see it's nicely finished on the inside. It has beveled corners. This does two things. It doesn't just look great, but it adds extra stability to the album cover. So you're going to begin by cutting two pieces of eight and a half by six and a half designer paper. Then you're going to, and I've already done the front, we'll do the back 
cover together. You're going to lay this paper on your scoreboard. And I will tell you, if you have, this is an all over pattern, so it doesn't really matter right side up, upside down. But if you have, if you choose a pattern that has a clear right side up, upside down, you need to make sure that you put your score on the right, what is going to be the right hand side so that you don't end up with an upside down pattern. But I chose patterns that work either way because I'm a simple girl and simple works for me. So you're gonna lay this on your scoreboard and you're gonna score a half inch on the right hand side. Then turn it and you're gonna score a half inch on the long side and then turn it and you're gonna score another half inch here. So take your bone folder and, oops, I'm doing it backwards actually. I want this beautiful tree bark pattern to be my back cover. And we're just gonna fold these in with our bone folder. All right, and then we're gonna come in with our scissors and we're going to snip up to the score line and then go out at a 45 degree angle to bevel the edge. So I'll just show you that again. We're gonna go up to the score line and then out at a 45 degree angle. And this is gonna give us that beautiful beveled edge. Let me move this out of the way. Now we'll bring in our back cover and here we go. And as you can see, this is gonna fit in there as nice as you please. Isn't that lovely how that works? So begin, just double check your measurements. It's easy to be a little bit off and I am just a little bit tight on this bottom edge. Line that up. Yeah, that's better. Okay, so take your glue And you're going to do, you want your V's to be on the top. So run your glue along this flap. And then just fold that over. Burnish it down. Then come up here and you're going to do the same thing up here. Use your bone folder if you need to. It looks like I'm a little off right here. I'll just turn this. The good thing about paper is it is adjustable and flexible. So you can fix that. And then I'm going to put this back on the scoreboard just to make sure I've got a nice neat score. And it's okay to do that. like that. All right. You can see that folds up. And you do want to come in with your scissor on this inside corner and just bevel it. And I'm going to lift this and do it again. It just makes it neater. It makes it lie more neatly. And then add a little more glue. And we're going to cover all this up so the little wrinkles and stuff you aren't even going to see. Remember, paper is flexible. You can bend it to your will. And then glue along this edge. And now this should fold up. Yep. Easy peasy. Just kind of burnish that down. Hold it in place. Check this side, we're lined up nice here. Sometimes you have to come back and trim just a little bit, but um, there's another step, so don't worry about that right now. Okay, now we're gonna take our inside liner piece and it's gonna glue in just like this. And the wonderful thing about working with a collection kit like this is that all the papers coordinate. So you don't have to worry, is this paper gonna look good with this paper? They all look 
really fantastic together. Authentique does such a good job making patterns that work well together. So there is that. So that's our inside cover, our outside cover. That looks really good. See? Now I want a contrasting spine. So to do that, I cut another piece of my designer paper and I want to have this plaid on the outside for my contrasting spine and I cut this three and a half inches by five and a half inches and then I just took a pencil I laid my book like this on the and I marked kind of eyeballed where the middle was and made pencil marks and this is just going to help that help me fold that paper around that spine I'm just gonna score along those little pencil marks that I made and then just burnish these this way it's nice and uh, straight you have a good crisp fold and you can see this is gonna fit just like that Isn't that pretty so we're just going to glue this on and again you want to you'll want to give this some time for the glue to set up you could use score tape if you wanted to um, for this sort of gluing I like liquid glue because it gives me a chance to adjust if I go crooked all right so now we're just going to set this Just like that and then tap it burnish it and then just set that aside and let that set up but there you go we have a contrasting spine front and back which is so classy I love that now we're gonna go to work on the pocket pages and I'll be back when we're ready to do that step okay very quickly before we do the pocket pages I want to show you how to add a ribbon closure to your folio so what I've done is found the midpoint on my album cover and I laid it out flat and then just ran half inch score tape from edge to edge and across the spine then you're going to take some ribbon whatever ribbon you like this is a burlap center stitch ribbon from really reasonable ribbon and I like this because it kind of has a <coughs> rustic fall feel and you want to lay this over here and kind of figure out your measurement leave enough room to tie so I would say we go from here I don't know probably about three feet of ribbon I would rather go over than under and I'll tell you a nifty little trick for natural ribbon like this if it has a tendency to fray of course cutting a V slit on the end really helps and that's what I'm doing here but the other thing is once you put this down just tap a little of that um, Art Institute dries clear glue just a dab dab it on the end and um, it'll stop the fraying but it won't show okay so peel off your liner tape fold your ribbon in half find the center point of your ribbon Find the center point of your spine. And then you're just going to press this. I had my ribbon folded in half. And you're just going to press this down onto your cover. And there's your closure. And I actually, I probably went overboard with the length of the ribbon, but like I said, I would rather have too much than too little. And now this will form a really pretty tie closure. For the album. All right, thanks. Okay, I'm back, and as you can see, I finished my ribbon closure. I just punched a hole through and added this big um, copper brad to sort of anchor the ribbon securely. And I've gone ahead. Now we're going to start our inside pages. To start with, in the gutter here, I ran a little piece of. Um, sticker border from the details um, sticker sheet that comes with the 12 by 12 collection kit 
And then here's my first pocket page. And we're gonna, we already built the pocket, so I'm just gonna show you how to decorate it. And basically what I did, this is so simple, this is just a piece of 12 by 12 paper that I trimmed at five and a quarter. Then I scored it at seven inches and then folded this over. And then this fits perfectly. When you're doing your pocket pages, you want to remember that part of it is going to be adhered back behind your little flap. So don't waste designer paper by going all the way to the edge. But now, when I decorate this, you'll see we'll do some fun things with this, but lots of room for pictures. And then here's your pocket, of course. And to go in the pocket, I took an eight and a half by 11 piece of craft card stock. I trimmed it down to, I believe this is seven inches. Oops, helps if I hold the ruler right side up. This is seven and a half inches, and then I scored it at four and three quarters just to make a little folio to go in the pocket. And then you can shape the corners if you want to. You can add a little bit of decoration, but you need to remember that this is going to be sitting inside your shadow box, your you know photo tray. So you don't want to make this too fat or it won't fit. So there's that one done. We'll go ahead and do this one together. So to do this, you're going to need your pocket that we built in an earlier step, and then you're going to need two pieces of designer paper, cut five and a quarter inches tall, and leave it at the 12 inch length. Score it so that it fits the front of your pocket, like this, and then I like to always finish the edges with a little inking. Um, it just kind of creates a visual border. And you're not going crazy, you're just tapping a little vintage photo on here. It looks nice with these fall papers. And it covers up the raw cut edge. And it sort of creates its own little frame. So once that is done, going to go ahead and I already used my hole punch to punch my thumb hole. Make sure I have this the right way. Yep. So just add your glue. And again for things like this I like to use liquid glue. I have a hard time sometimes um, getting things straight so this gives me just that extra half a second to move things around if I need to line it up and press it down. See what I mean? I need to shift this just a little bit. There. And then just burnish that down. And of course this will open out for more pictures or whatever. And then flip it over. And here's the second piece that you've already prepared. And this one is going to go like this. I got that right side up? No, I haven't. Okay, it's going to go like this. Sorry. <laughs> do as I do, not as I say. Um, let me just ink this up real quick. I usually do this before I start taping, but I'm multitasking today. So sometimes I get a little forgetful. And again, the lovely thing about working with a collection is that you know that all the papers are going to really flow well together. And the reason I knew that was upside down, I don't know if you can see it on the camera, there's a tiny little script in the background. And I realized it was upside down. So just add your glue. And then line this up. Just like this. Okay, and now I'll just show you very quickly how to insert the page into the album. I use court, um, half inch score tape and we're just going to run this all the way along the edge. Burnish it down. I'm going to trim off these little extra pieces. Remove the liner. And then I kind of stand this 
and I press it in so that I can see that I'm lined up and then I just lift it into place and what I'll do because I've got this little border I'll use border paper or um, something decorative to cover that up but there you go there are your two pages and you really can't do more than two pages because it's not a very deep opening in that tray but now all you have to do is decorate your folio and you're good to go and I'll be back when that's done we'll have the big reveal and 